Welcome to BG24 Public Affairs. I'm Melissa Belcher. And I'm Perminder Bunga. BGSU's campus will officially be smoke-free in January. We'll talk to two members from the Smoking Ban Committee about the change. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'll be speaking to the director of the cancer program from Wood County Hospital, along with the breast cancer survivor. Need a last minute costume for your child? We have a seamstress in the studio, ready to show you how to create your costume. Very true, very true. But first, let's get the updates and the latest news and weather from Heather Paula. Heather? Thanks, Parminder. Rossford City Council is preparing for a new outdoor recreational store. On Monday, council members passed three ordinances that will help a new project that aims to place a camping world near Bass Pro. The new store will be focused on selling recreational, uh, recreational vehicles, similarly to Bass Pro's focus on fishing supplies. The plan is still in the first stages of preparation, and there is no word yet on a date for construction of the camping world to begin. A Toledo man has been sentenced to eight years in prison for identity theft. Earlier this week, Jermaine Stevenson was sentenced on a guilty plea for defrauding banks out of over $60,000. Authorities say Stevenson used the internet to steal names, social security numbers, and credit card numbers. He then used the information to defraud banks issuing credit cards. The judge who handed down Stevenson's sentence recommended that he be denied computer access in prison. And Michigan lawmakers are discussing a new law that will require vehicles re registered in the state to have two license plates. Senator Tupac Hunter proposed the bill this week as a way of preventing crime. Senator Hunter also claims that having a front license plate warns oncoming drivers that the vehicle is there when the headlights are turned off. More than 30 states require both front and rear license plates, and Michigan's current law only requires vehicles to have one visible plate. Plate, yes. The event on most minds tonight is Halloween. We have an updated schedule for trick-or-treating times for local cities. Both Bowling Green and Pemberville trick-or-treating will take place from 6.30 to 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. And Maumee and Perrysburg uh, and Toledo have trick-or-treating scheduled for 6 to, 6 to 8 p.m. tomorrow. For a complete list of schedules, please visit our Facebook page. And rain is definitely in the forecast for Halloween. Uh, currently, we're sitting in the mid-60s. Uh, with a cloudy sky and with those winds coming out of the south at about seven miles per hour it definitely does feel like 65 out there a pleasant day um, for the fall uh, season um, and tomorrow we uh, are uh, going to be seeing those rain and uh, storms coming in but for tonight's forecast we'll be dropping down just below 60 degrees uh, rain for most of the evening but those storms will be coming in after midnight only expect maybe a rumble or two um, toward morning the chance of rain about 70 percent for tomorrow's forecast we'll be jumping up to about 68 degrees with those showers and storms continuing throughout the day Chance of rain actually increasing um, to 80%. Those winds continuing from the south 10 to 20 miles per hour, possibly gusting around 30 miles per hour. For tomorrow night's forecast, we drop down to just below 50 degrees with those showers and, and thunderstorms still continuing through tomorrow night and those will go through um, the day on Friday. The chance of rain um, almost 100%. So if you're going out tomorrow for trick or treating, definitely take an umbrella, rain boots, the whole, the whole nine yards. But be prepared for some heavy rain. And taking a look at our national weather, right now over Ohio and Michigan, we don't see any precipitation right now, just uh, those clouds moving in ahead of this um, storm system that will be bringing those showers and thunderstorms for our Halloween evening. And they also will be bringing some warmer temperatures as well. Currently, uh, we see 63 degrees around the Toledo area, 62 just south of Bowling Green. Fort Wayne is sitting at 63, and closer to the lake, we see 67 degrees. And for our five-day forecast, um, we see uh, mid-60s for today. Tomorrow, though, we see those uh, showers and thunderstorms, and we see those continuing throughout um, Friday as well. However, they'll definitely be more widespread um, for Thursday. And for Saturday, um, those showers continuing, but um, the chance of those, uh, those rain showers will be diminishing um, quite a lot. And we see those temperatures start to decrease as well. Um, Wednesday, Thursday is the hot day with um, temperatures barely reaching 70 degrees. However, Sunday, um, expect temperatures to look dip below 50 degrees. And stay tuned, we'll be back with Parminder and Melissa. Welcome back. My guests today are two our members from the Smoking Ban Committee here at BGSU. We have Michael Ginsberg, who are uh, the Associate Dean of Students, correct? Yes. And then Faith Yingling, the Director of the Wellness Connection. Yes. How are you guys doing today? 
Good, Great. Thanks. Good. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being on the show. I know we've been trying to schedule a meeting for quite some time now. <laughs> so um, for our viewers who aren't familiar with the smoking ban, how would you describe it to them? I would, first, we're calling it a clean air policy. Clean air um, policy, okay, mostly okay. Mostly because we are not banning smoking completely from campus. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is designating areas in which people who choose to smoke can do so, okay. um, in order to create an environment for those who choose not to smoke mm -hmm. so that they're not being exposed to secondhand smoke. And when will this take in effect? January 1st of, January this, 1st. of 2014. Okay. Um, so we engaged in some advertising that the policy was coming mm -hmm. at the beginning of the semester, and we do have some things coming towards the middle and the end of the semester uh, to help remind people that the policy will go into effect when they get back from the holiday break. Okay, great. And when was this exactly decided? Because I'm pretty sure it was it in last year, early this year, in May, or if I... When was it decided? Mm -hmm. The Board of Trustees passed it in June okay. of this year. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And um, you guys also, so right now uh, students can smoke, but it has to be 35 feet from the buildings. Is that correct? Mostly correct. Okay. Um, not completely sure. Mm -hmm. I know that the residence hall is definitely is, is 35 feet. Okay. Uh, the rest of the policy does not necessarily indicate a distance from a building. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons we decided that moving into the direction of designated areas mm -hmm. is that then it helps people um, not be confused okay. about where smoking can be right. engaged in on campus mm -hmm. so that they're not having to count steps from a doorway or anything like that. Um, besides you two, how many members are on the committee? There were oh. two students, one from USG and one okay. from GSS. Okay. Uh, Faculty a, member? An administrative staff member, a classified staff, staff member. Uh, one of the vice presidents um, was asked to chair the mm -hmm. initiative. Um, that was it. Mm -hmm. So it's good representation from around campus. Okay, Absolutely. no, yeah. definitely great representation. But um, how do you think this is going to benefit the school, the students, um, just the campus and, and as a whole? I think there's a, a, a few ways that it'll benefit. Um, one, it will increase um, or will increase the health benefit mm -hmm. to the campus as a whole, help okay. create more of a culture of wellness on this campus. Um, and it will decrease the amount of secondhand smoke that we have on campus. Mm -hmm. So that will definitely be a benefit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you actually, um, how, do you, how are you going to implement this policy? Because I know many students who are smokers, they, they said, you know, they're still going to smoke because mm -hmm. there's not going to be any officers telling them what to do. So they're going to do whatever they choose to do. So how do you do it? And I think that's mostly this? accurate. I think it's everyone's okay. responsibility, including right. our police officers. Uh -huh. um, if they do see someone smoking on campus in an area that's not designated for mm -hmm. smoking, uh, to remind the individual that we are a clean air campus mm -hmm. uh, and that there are designated areas on campus in which they can smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes personally owned vehicles okay. um, in parking lots. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there'll be a map available. There is currently a map available on the Clean Air website. Uh, we're hoping to clean that up a little bit, so to speak, so it's a little prettier. Okay. Uh, it's a little <laughs> difficult to read right now, so we're trying to make some improvements to it so that students know exactly where they are permitted to smoke. If, and it's not just students, so if students, faculty, or staff, visitors are seen smoking and mm -hmm. someone confronts them, the expectation would be that they would put out the okay. cigarette and go to an area where they can smoke. Um, if that does not happen and it's a student violating the policy, mm -hmm. um, anybody can submit an incident report online. Okay. Uh, and then uh, my office will take care of meeting with the student and talking about the policy and if there's accountability that needs to be engaged in, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a faculty or staff member, what we've agreed is that um, anybody can submit an incident report online mm -hmm. and if it's a faculty, staff member or visitor, then I will share that incident report with either human resources um, or our police if it's a visitor. Okay. And this incident report, so um, people write down sure. why they feel like um, they you can go to bgsu.edu okay. okay. slash student handbook, and then in the left hand navigation, there is report an incident, mm -hmm. and then you read a sort of introductory paragraph, click report an incident underneath that, and then you just put uh, the person's name if you know it, uh, and then as much detail about the incident as you can provide. Okay, great. And what, what kind of reaction have you gotten from students and faculty as well? Most of the reaction, and we've been out at, at events such as our late night events, mm -hmm. Campus Fest, okay. events such as at the health fair, mm -hmm. most of the um, uh, uh, reactions have been positive. Okay. So, um, and, and we've, we have a, a, an email, so if people have questions or concerns, mm -hmm. they can email us at cleanair at bgsu.edu. Okay, great. And um, we've only received a couple of questions and comments so okay. far. So. People well, are more than welcome to do well. that. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much. We really appreciate you being on the show. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we're going to go on a quick break, but when we come back, Melissa will be talking to a breast cancer survivor. 
Welcome back to BG24 um, Public Affairs. I'm Melissa Belcher, and I am here with Ms. Stephanie Lane, correct? Yes. Who is the director of the cancer program at Wood County Hospital, and Ruth Alternator, who is a 13-year strong breast cancer survivor. So um, I would like to thank you so much for coming, guys. It really means a lot to us. You're welcome. Yeah. So um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and though we like to joke and you know have fun on the show, we did think it was very important to um, raise awareness for breast cancer. So um, I would like to ask you, you're here to discuss how mammography mm -hmm. plays a huge role in detecting breast cancer, correct? Correct. Okay, so um, could you explain to the viewers what exactly a mammogram is? Yeah, a mammogram is basically a um, x-ray of the breast tissue okay. on both sides, two pictures of each side, and it's taken to show um, differences in density within the tissues. Okay. And when there is a, a large d density in the breast, then they usually go in and evaluate it further. And it's very important because it's one screening tool that can help prevent cancer because um, okay. Cancer can be detected at a very early rate and ensures a high rate of survival. Okay. Um, such as, as your experience yeah. has been. <laughs> yeah. So um, just how important is getting a mammogram? It's, it's a very important test. Um, just like other screening tests and immunizations, it's, it's a tool that can help us lead a healthier life. Um, the American Cancer Society and the American College of Radiology recommends that women uh, start evaluating themselves with screening mammography at starting at the age of 40 and every year afterwards. Wow, okay. So what advice would you give to the people who are um, unsure about getting a mammogram because they may be worried about the cost or they may not even have insurance? There are options out there. Wood County Hospital is um, in a program right now called the Power of Pink and it is um, done with a grant from the Susan J. Komen Foundation Okay. and it does offer mammograms for those who um, meet the criteria okay. of income and they can just call the Women's Center for information to see if they meet that criteria. Okay and um, lastly what uh, would you say to the people that think men can't get breast cancer? Well, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> Men have breast tissue. They, they're born with it. It just doesn't um, progress in, when they go through uh, puberty like, like women do because of the hormone differences. But they can still get breast cancer. Okay. About 1% of all breast cancers are to men. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and um, talk to Ruth. Once again, she is a 13-year survivor yes, of breast that's cancer. Correct. That is amazing. But not only is she a breast cancer survivor, you are also a member and a volunteer for the American Cancer Association, correct? That's right. Society. I'm sorry, society. So um, could you explain a little bit um, about the Reach for Recovery program that you volunteer for? Yes, it's an educational program of the Cancer Society. We are approached by doctor's offices or by individuals who need more information when they're first diagnosed. So then we visit with them over the phone or go and, and visit with them in the hospital or okay. after their biopsy and okay. uh, also at home. Okay, so as a volunteer, is that what you're responsible for doing? You go yeah. out and visit the people? Well, mostly I end up speaking on the telephone okay. and then uh, talking to them again after they have their surgery or start radiation. And I spend um, time talking, answering questions. Okay. And um, you had your surgery in 2000, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, if it's okay with you, could you share a little bit about your um, journey with breast cancer? Yes, I okay. was diagnosed in right before Christmas, unfortunately, in 1999. And then I had my first, I had my biopsy in, uh, December, in the end of December, and then also started, had first surgery. And then, unfortunately, I got a telephone call that I did not have what the radiologist or what the lab said was 
a clean edges, so I had to have a second surgery. Okay. And then I had radiation, and then I was on medication. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I am so glad that you're able to be here with us. I want to thank both of you all so much for taking the time out and coming to talk to us. So um, when we come back, we'll um, join us because we'll be um, making fun Halloween costumes. Welcome back. Um, our guest today is Jamie Zilk, who is a business owner, and it's called Jamie Seems to Fit. Yes, it is. And where is your business located? I'm located behind rallies at the corner of Pone. Okay, so um, you would call yourself a seamstress then? Seamstress, tailor, alterations, uh, <laughs> Home decor. Yeah. We need to bring her clothes. Yeah, <laughs> we were just talking about that. Yeah. Um, so you're going to show us how to make a last minute Halloween costume, correct? A last minute no so Halloween costume <laughs> for the, the parent who didn't have time to get anything done, uh -huh. doesn't have a needle and thread, and just okay. have some household items that can put together an outfit for a, a young child. So what will you be making for us today, and what are the items we'll be using? We're going to make Elsie the cow. Oh, wow. oh okay. You're going to need one <laughs> pillowcase either a black or a white hat. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to need a few pairs of black socks okay. and also some tube socks if you have it, a few safety pins, and a Sharpie. And you can and just buy these, all these supplies like Myers, Walmart, somewhere. You can probably room. find them in a lot of your dressers. All right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's you true. You don't have to spend any money. Great. <laughs> so how do we start this? First, you're going to start off with your, um, your pillowcase. And basically, you're going to cut out a space at the top for the neck mm -hmm. that'll fit over the head of your child and also uh, cut out a half moon on both sides to let them get their arms out. That seems very simple so far. Yeah. <laughs> so far. No sewing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't bring all my machines in here with me. <laughs> So and basically, you, right you, now, then you've got yeah. a pillowcase with an opening for the so head like and open. both your okay. arms. Okay, great. Okay, great. then you know, however you want to do your cow spots, basically you can just draw some all around like that on both sides. Okay, and then you will um, cut all these out to hopefully look like. A cow. Um, what you're going to want to do is put your child in a black shirt and black mm -hmm. pants of some sort, black jeans, shirt, black pants, okay. whatever. Maybe something warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get in here and cut around all of these. Okay. And so I'm you're not, not cutting like this together, I guess you're doing like this No, first. you're doing each one okay. so okay. that you'll have these holes and their black shirt will show through okay. once they put it on. Um, I'm not going to do each one of these. Yeah, I have yeah, one that's yeah. already done, but okay. you're going to cut out all your circles on both sides. And that basically, that part of it will be done. What you're also going to do is use the tube socks mm -hmm. for over their hands and over their shoes to make their, the cow hooves. So would you okay. prefer the black tube socks or the white tube socks? We're going to use the black them? ones for something else. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so at the bottom of each, tube sock, okay. you will color it in black, mm -hmm. and then you'll place this over the child's shoe, so that, and then roll this okay. down, and it'll look like the cow's foot, and you'll put it on their hands as okay. well. On their hands, on the two socks you're using up there, you'll cut a small hole here, Bring and that thumbs. way, when they go through, their thumb will come out so that they can hold a bag or whatever, okay. and you'll roll those down. <laughs> so now you've got your cow body. You've got your feet, uh -huh. you've got your hands, and you're going to have your head with your ears on. And basically, you take two of your socks. So this is what the black socks are yeah. for? Yeah. Okay. And you'll cut them off. You'll take a safety pin and basically sort of group this together. And pin oh, that, that in so there. <laughs> And you'll do that on both okay. sides so that there is an ear for the cow. Oh, oh wow, okay. okay. And they'll put that head on. <laughs> and then you will take one of these and sort of so this is just 
fold it down and on the back side of the pillowcase you'll put that on and that is your cow and tail. Do you pin the tail on? I mean, can you glue it on? You pin, you pin the tail on the you cow. You pin the tail okay. on the cow. Okay. <laughs> so and basically that's it. Now okay. there are some, if you want to go to put some face paint on, mm -hmm. they suggest you put a big pink circle here for the cow's face and okay. the nose. Put some eyelashes on and maybe mm -hmm. a spot here or there. So what do you suggest that the child wears under this? Just black color. shirt and a black Okay, pants. to make the spot stand mm -hmm. out. Okay. Okay, no, that's wonderful. We so could put it over your shirt. Yeah, we can put it over your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so how does the final product look? The final like product <laughs> is my nephew, Ethan. Come on out, buddy. And this oh, is no. your no-so last, <laughs> your no-so last minute. Oh my gosh, cow. she's adorable. <laughs> Those are your hands and okay. your feet. Your ears, and go ahead and turn around for them, And your tail. <laughs> <laughs> you can smile. Do you want to smile, Ethan? No? <laughs> Thank you for doing this. He's a little shy. Oh, that's so cute. And how old is he? How old are five, you, Five, right? Oh. You're five? Okay, so he really likes to show his tail What off. age, would you, I guess, would you recommend this costume for? You know what? You could make it for an adult as well. How oh, about a pack okay. of cows? And oh, I'm yeah. sure that <laughs> they could come up with some different ideas, you know, to do to it. Okay. Um, you want to turn around for the camera? <laughs> I think he's being a little shy. <laughs> so tell us about your business. Um, how long have you been open? My mm -hmm. business, it'll be eight years this Christmas. Okay. Um, I started out there with one machine and an ironing board eight years ago, mm -hmm. and I'm ready to expand and uh, enlarge the business right now. And actually, I'm getting ready to move downtown. Oh, oh so okay. on Main Street, you're saying downtown? I okay. will be just south of Ben Franklin, oh, and that's great. That's I will have <laughs> three times the room, and I also specialize in weddings and tuxedo rentals. Oh, okay. um, and do all of the custom tailoring for all the military around as oh, well. Oh wow, that's okay. wonderful. Do you have any other costume ideas besides the cow? Like someone can throw up, uh, throw, make it really quickly. <laughs> Actually, you can do this if you do have a black sh shirt of some sort, mm -hmm. wear white underneath. Okay. Um, you can cut into it, and I've seen them do the skeletons. You know, you can oh, cut oh, all your okay. rib cage. Oh, so just you just cut it. Um, how would you? You can just put bones in there okay. and wear the white shirt or the black shirt underneath. Okay, like great. That. But you know. That was my last minute for you. So. Okay, no, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. So are you planning on dressing up at all? <laughs> you know what? It's tomorrow, right? Yep, it's tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I probably, I, I'll, I'll be handing out some candy. I don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah. I will be doing the same thing as well. So, but we really appreciate you being on the yeah, set. Thanks thank you so, so much. much. And thanks to Ethan. He's hiding back here. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And Jamie Zilk, correct? Yep. So if you want to, um, and you're located right behind Riley. Rallies. Rallies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you Jamie very much. Jamie seems to fit. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow we'll have BG24 News at 530. Thank you so much for joining us tonight.